Hello, this is David D. Hilscher. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something your university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. You can see I'm sporting my uh, Einstein shirt today because I want to talk about Einstein. You know, I'm not the greatest fan. Um, but anyways, what I'd like to talk to you today is very interesting, something you're not going to hear anywhere else probably in the world, and an interesting take that I, that I really have been thinking about very recently and want to uh, impart this to you so you can become that critical thinker that you need to be and not read this stuff and think that all this uh, fantasy is reality. You've got to be able to read between the lines. I'm going to show you something about a, this article from Discover Magazine called In Einstein's Head. This is very common. A lot of times when, when people talk and scientists talk and journalists talk about uh, Einstein, they talk about his thought experiments. My brother, a uh, very bright guy, he hates thought experiments. I sort of agree with him uh, because thought experiments are usually wrong and a lot of times they ha suffer from one big problem. And I think, Michael, I hope you watch me. Uh, my Michael, Michael, uh, of course, is a big fan of his brothers and scientifically. But um, anyways, great writer he is. He is going to enjoy what I'm going to say about why the thought experiments specifically from Einstein are bogus. And you're going to say, well, what do you mean? By You'll find out. So we're going to go down here and look at the second paragraph in this uh, Albert Einstein's, in all in Einstein's head from Discovery Magazine. We'll start at the second se sentence. Albert Einstein, like uh, Ni Nicholas Copernicus and Galileo Galilei before him, redefined our understanding of the universe, and he did so thanks to keeping his thoughts clear of unnecessary information. That, in that sentence, is actually the downfall, and it's the words unnecessary information. I'm going to talk about that. Let's keep going. In fact, he conducted experiments on the basis of, of thought alone, playing them out in something like the construct from The Matrix, a completely empty space populated only by items essential to his experiments. Again, this is the downfall. It's not his. It's not his experiments. It's not his thought. It's not the details of what he's doing. It's the basis for how he does it, where it goes drastically wrong. And here are his items that he has in his universe: a clock, a train, a beam of light, an observer or two, an elevator. And then you hear this a quote from Einstein: "Imagine a large portion of empty space, so far removed from stars and other appreciable masses," said Einstein, describing his mental construct. So, here's what happens when you do that when it's wrong. That is, this I'm going to tell you why this is a bad uh, experiment. Besides being a thought experiment, which aren't usually very good. Here's, here's what the conclusions, this is what happens. Using these ingredients, plus some basic physical principles, Einstein came to mind-boggling, yet <laughs> unavoidable conclusions that overturned all of physics. I mean, my... Oh, praise Einstein. If I rub his tummy, do I get... Will I get magical powers? Well, Mr. Einstein, you're wrong. I'm sorry to say that, but listen to that. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the mind-boggling yet unavoidable conclusions, meaning he thought of stuff that no one would ever imagine would be true, and yet they were unavoidable. They were unavoidable because his setup was wrong. And, of course, the conclusion that overturned all of physics. And it overturned all of physics if we look 100 years in the future, it overturned physics and put it, us on a dead-end path to nowhere. It wasted lots of billions of dollars and lots of amazingly bright people doing things that don't exist in their unicorn world. All right. With special relativity, he showed that time and space were interwined. Time isn't a thing, folks. How can you interweave it? Not... Uh, demarca demarcated by the same grid lines and tick-tock regu regularity for everyone. 
And he's talking about time being different. A decade later, with general relativity, he found that gravity actually distorts space and time. We've talked about it. We're not going to talk about it again. Space-time's a joke. There's no physicality to it. We know, I, if you don't know why special relativity is wrong, look up special relativity in my all my videos, and you can hear about that. Let's get to the meat of the problem here. And that meat of the problem has to do with, believe it or not, infinity. And I'll go to one of my favorite scientists in the world, and that is Dr. Glenn Borkert, Borkert the Infinity Guru. He's going to be uh, having his channel and working with him to get his channel because that guy is amazing. And infinity exists in our world. When we talk about parallel universes, that's some idea in another dimension, sort of like right here. No. Physicality is physicality. In the infinite world, everything, everything that exists has smaller parts, and those parts have smaller parts on infinite item. And the same way going up, we're made of uh, subatomic particles, atoms make up our bodies, cells, all those kinds of things could get together. Here I am, I'm on an Earth, the Earth goes around the Sun, the Sun goes around the galaxy, the galaxies are moving through space, and there are even superstructures above that at infinitum. That is really hard to imagine. But regardless of that, there comes a, a really important point, and that's what Glenn Borker calls uh, a unicosm. A unicosm is one sort of area. We're in our unicosm here, but it's affected by macrocosms and mi microcosms, meaning, very simply, everything is related to everything. You can't have things that are just up here in the universe all by themselves and get rid of everything in the universe because that's not the way the universe works. That is the downfall of these thought experiments. We go back to what Einstein, or this article says, a completely empty space populated, populated by only these essential items to essential, only, uh, only items essential to his experiments. A clock, a train, a beam of light, an observer, or two, an elevator. And I said, imagine we take everything away. I used to do this, but I found out because of our particle model, my, my father and I have this particle model of the universe, which everything has physicality now in that. I've learned and opened up my eyes, this particle model, to one very important, the most important reason why these experiments in special relativity and general relativity are wrong. It's because the universe, you can't have everything gone in the universe and have a light beam. Light comes from somewhere. In fact, we think it's particles, like a photon, but it's not the photon. And they come from all the stars. They're just shot out all, all over the place. And there are waves in these particles that come in waves, and that's what we see as light. That's what we see. But regardless, light can exist in a vacuum. And I don't mean a vacuum of space. I'm talking about empty space. I'm talking about the universe. Light comes from somewhere. There are particles that make that. We are things that are made of all kinds of atoms. We live in a universe with a gajillion infinite number of things around us. And those things have to be part of our model. You can't, like Einstein, throw them all out. Because then you get real problems of not having any reference. There's always a reference. There's things always around you. So this idea of reference in Kara, Dr. Karazani shows that the idea of different frames existing and the physics in each frame being the same, there's a paradox there. The physics is the same for everywhere. The universe doesn't care about frames. The universe doesn't exist with just a light. It, you can't, there is no universe, even in your imagination, where you all of a sudden have light and this. Oh, it's magic. Yeah, it's magic, but it isn't a good model then for coming up with an entire physics, physics paradigm. So, so the answer to the question of where did Einstein go wrong in the very beginning, in this beautiful, what's in his head? Well, it's really more what's not in his head. What's not in his head are everything else that are the supporting cast of the universe, infinitely up and infinitely down, that allows all these things to happen. You can't throw those away and just say, oh, I have a light beam in myself. I have no idea if I'm traveling, it's traveling. That's not the way the world works. The universe doesn't work that way. Things travel, things move for a reason. There's always cause and effect. Karazani says that very clearly. Dr. Um, 
Peter Marquardt in my film says very eloquently, Einstein's theory of relativity is about the effects, not the events itself. That is, if we have a train and a light and everything moving, the universe doesn't care. The universe doesn't say, oh, I'm on this train and I'm in this frame, so light can only go this fast. That's how ding-dong it is. I'm sorry, Mr. Einstein. It's ding-dong. If, if we have a physical model for light, for gravity, for magnetism, all those things, a model for the atom and how those interact, like our particle model does, we can start to look at whatever he's putting together. But in our universe, we don't have uh, G1 particles coming in waves as light all by themselves in isolation. It doesn't exist. There's all kinds of stuff around it. So Einstein's big mistake was that he, they look at this as, as very important, as very, in fact, he conducted his experiments on the basis of thought alone, and he says a completely empty space Imagine a large portion of space, a portion of empty space. He's getting rid of everything, and then of course you're going to go bonkers because how can you do a unit? Your universe rules are going to be real simple. They're going to be squirrely. No offense, relativity is really simplistic. The world is really complex, and all the interactions, and and that's where he goes wrong. When you are, all, I'm only in an elevator. There's light, and we don't. I don't know if I'm moving or not. It could be gravity, or it could be not. The world doesn't work that way. If you are in a plane in the vomit comet, and you're training for NASA or you're training for uh, SpaceX or whatever to go out and in, the reason you feel weightlessness is because we are manipulating everything around us. The gravity coming down, the G1 particles pushing down on us. We fall at the at, at a rate where we are the, the the gravity makes us feel like relative to the plane. We're sort of in weightlessness. Are we in weightlessness? It doesn't matter. What we know is that's how it works. That's the physicality of it. You can't throw everything else away. And because of that, his conclusions to everyone in the absurdity that everybody has to measure the speed of light the same no matter what frame of reference even though we're only in one year the universe is one coordinate system we can only move the origin that's all we can do that's what Karazani discovered that's when I read his work and studied his work many years that's what it means so that's that's his problem our problem isn't with all oh, the amazing things, oh, uh, mind-boggling yet unavoidable conclusions that overturned all physics. Folks, they're going to read this in the future, not as a positive thing, but as a negative thing. So I hope that gives you some insight as to why Einstein's thought experiments and the basis for everything he does in, in the genius series. All these things that you see on TV with beautiful graphics and Oscar winning blah blah blahs. I know 10 Emmys. Doesn't matter. Mr. Einstein, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. So if you think that it's going to be different, it's not. So remember what I always say, that you don't want to take anyone anyone you don't want to take anyone what sa anyone says on faith stay critical stay thinking my name's david de hilster i'm your science therapist i got to go ciao for now